So let's do question number 69. A person buy three articles P, Q and R 450 rupees and price of Q is 16 rupees which is the least. So what I'm analyzing the information we have in the question stem. So sum of all the three articles so P plus Q plus R is equal to 50 and I know that the price of Q is 16 rupees and which is the least. That means other two articles should cost greater than 60. Okay, this also should be greater than 60. Okay. Or if you simplify it further, what we can do is we can write it as uh, P plus R is equal to, if I take 16 to the other side, P plus R is equal to 50 minus 16, which is equal to 34. So this is the equation we have. And the question is asking, what is the price of P? I need to find a unique value for P. So it's a value-based data sufficiency question. If you're getting multiple values of P as answer, that means the statement is not sufficient. If you're getting a unique answer for P, that means the statement is sufficient. Okay. So now we're going to start with statement one. It's your choice. You could start with either statement one or two. It's up to you. Okay. So let's start with statement one. So what does statement one say? The cost of P is not more than that of R. That means it is given that P is less than or equal to R. This is the information we have, the condition we have. P has to be less than or equal to R. So now what we're going to do is we're going to think about some values. Okay. That will satisfy this condition as well as this condition. Also, we need to, we know that P and R are greater than 16. Okay. All the three conditions satisfying, I'm looking for some values. So P has to be greater than 16. So first value you can think about is 17. Okay. If P is 17, R also has to be 17. Yeah, this makes sense. 17 plus 17 is 34. This is one of the combination. So is there any other combination possible? Let's say I'm next thinking about value of P is 18. Okay. So if it is 18, then R has to be 16, which is uh, not following the satisfying, satisfying the condition, right? Because R has to be greater than 16. This is not possible. So the common mistake a test taker do in this scenario is they will assume that the price of P, Q and R or price of P and R has to be an integer value. That is a wrong assumption. It is nowhere mentioned in the question that these values has to be an integer. We are dealing with a data sufficiency question because we are figuring out whether the statements are sufficient to answer the question, right? So you need to think about all the possible scenarios. So here, the price of P and R, it can be decimal. Okay, I can think about what is a close decimal greater than 16 again. Okay, let's say 16.5. Value of P is 16.5 and the corresponding the value of uh, R will be 17.5. Then you will get what 34, right? Makes sense. This is P, this is R. It is nowhere in the question mentioned that P and R, the value has to be an integer. No. That means you have the freedom to think about any real numbers. Okay. So here, this is also true. All the conditions are satisfied. See, P, the value of P is less than or equal to R. Yes, that is true. The sum is uh, 34. Right? So, if I if I use the statement 1, you are getting multiple values for P. In the first example, you got 17 as a value for P. In the second one, you are getting 16.5. And there are, even it could be 16.4, any other decimals is possible, right? So, there are multiple values possible. So, at this stage, I could say statement 1 is not sufficient to answer the question. Statement 1 is eliminated. Or I could say option B is also eliminated. Because statement can be, option B says the statement can be answered using either statement alone. That is not true. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze statement 2 alone individually. So what statement 2 is saying, the cost of R is not more than uh, that of P. That means R has to be less than or equal to P. R has to be less than or equal to P. So what I can think about, what are the possible combinations? I know that uh, I'm analyzing statement 2. Okay, I know that P plus R is equal to 34. So one combination I could think about is 17 plus 17 is 34, right? This is correct. Value of R is less than or equal to P. This is one possibility. The other possibility here has to be, okay, this is R is value of R is 16.5 and value of P is 17.5. This also will give you 16, 34. The condition is also correct. Value of R is actually less than or equal to 
P, which is 17.5. Yes. So that means if I use statement 2 individually, it is also not sufficient to answer the question. You are getting multiple answers for P. See, the price can be 17 or it can be 17.5. There are multiple answers. So statement 2 allowed is also not sufficient to answer the question. So the now ne the next step is uh, you need to combine both the statements because individually each one of them is not sufficient to answer then you need to combine it. So if you combine the statements if you analyze these two conditions see in the first statement is given that P is less than or equal to R the second one is given that R is less than or equal to P. So if both of them has to be true only if P is equal to R. That means if you combine the statement, the value of P and R has to be the same. So P is equal to 17 and R is equal to 70. This is the only possible values of P and R if you combine both the statements. That means you are getting a unique answer for P. So your answer is option C is the right answer. You combine both the statements to answer the question. And it cannot be answered using either statement alone. 